in the name of God. Hello, dear students. My name is Masoud. I'm a physics teacher. We are in Ferhoa's website at your service to explain physics curriculum great growth. Our goal is to uh, make the subject easy for you as much as possible. Let's uh, dive in with the book. I'm going to explain the contents of this, of this book, especially chapter one. I'm going to uh, explain the, the contents of chapter one for you. Uh, chapter one talks about uh, chapter one talks about the rotational and uh, this is the title actually title of chapter one rotational motion and the law of gravity right uh, this chapter consists of three sections section one one measuring rotational motion section one two tan tangential and centripetal acceleration Section 1-3, uh, causes of circular motion. So they are, uh, let's say, uh, sections, uh, let's say, oh, uh, in th there are sections for, uh, let's say, chapter 1. Uh, let's uh, start with the section 1-1, one, one measuring rotational motion, and the first subject is ro rotational quantity. What's the rotational quantity, actually? Uh, before I explain this one for you, I'm going to, let's say, tell you an introduction about the motion in, in general. In, uh, let's say, previous year, uh, we talked about the, the simplest type of motion, uh, which is, uh, let's say, uh, which is linear motion. Actually, this type of motion is the simplest type of motion. We talked about the uh, motion in one, uh, linear motion one dimension, in two dimension, and uh, we, let's say, uh, we focused on the, only on the, let's say, straight line, right? We focused on the motion on, on the straight line. But uh, actually this year, uh, let's say, which is the last year of your uh, studying actually, uh, this is the last year of uh, high school. You are in grade 12. That's why you reached uh, a, an advanced, actually, type of motion, which is called rotational motion or rotational and circular motion together, uh, right? So uh, every type of motion needs, uh, let's say, its quantity. That's why whenever you say rota rotational motion, so you need to have information about rotational quantity, right? Rotational quantities. Uh, let's, uh, let me read the, uh, let's say, definition for rotational quantity for you. It says, rotational quantities are quantities that are used for what? That are used for describing the angular motion, uh, right? Angular motion of an object. Uh, it is called rotational quantity. So quantities that are used for which purpose? for describing the angular motion. What do I mean by angular motion? I'll, I'll explain for you. Angular motion means uh, either we have rotational motion or let's say circular motion. I'll explain for you. Uh, it says, and it consists of, yeah, it, uh, I mentioned it here. It says a rotational, uh, let's say, or a rotational quantity consists of what? Consists of angular displacement and angular speed, right? angular speed and angular excess. So we have three, uh, let's say, quantities. They are bases of what? They, they are bases of rotational, uh, let's say, motion. You have to have information about these quantities in order to understand the uh, rotational and circular motion. So uh, you, you must know what angular displacement is. You should know what angular speed is, and you have info you have to information about angular acceleration. In general, there are type uh, two types of motion. This diagram. We we have this diagram. Uh, for you. Uh, I'll I'll draw this. Uh, let's say I drew this uh, graph for you. Types of motion. How many types of motion are there in physics? Actually, this is my classification for this chapter especially. 
maybe there are some classifications for motion, but I focused on these uh, parts, and uh, I just mentioned two, uh, let's say, types of motion, which are angular motion and uh, linear motion. Actually, this year, I told you, in previous year, uh, last year, we talked about linear motion in details, right? That's why this year, uh, let's say, we don't read this subject, linear motion, leave this subject, except for some simple questions in, in this chapter. Uh, we, we focus on angular motion, right? This is our subject, right? We focus on uh, angular motion. So angular motion itself is divided into two parts, rotational motion and circular motion. Rotational, circular. I wanted to distinguish between rotational and circular motion. They are, they are not the same, they are different, right? Let me read the definition for uh, rotational motion, motion. So what's rotational motion? Motion of a body that spins about an axis. Rotational motion, like this uh, Earth globe. We have an, an Earth globe, actually. This Earth globe, it rotates, yeah? It rotates about its axis. So rot rotational motion is the motion of object that rotates about itself. It rotates about its axis. This is called rotational motion, right? Or like this one. This, uh, let's say, pin wheel, actually. This pin wheel rotates about, uh, let's say, a pin. A pin here is considered an axis. That's why uh, this, uh, let's say, pin wheel rotates about a particular axis. This motion is called rotational motion, yeah? Rotational motion. Maybe you think about the ceiling fan is another uh, type of uh, rotational motion. Ceiling fan about its axis, right? Like this one, for example. Let me, uh, if I say it's like a ceiling fan actually, uh, it can be the motion of the object entirely, thoroughly, is called rotational motion, right? If you take the object, uh, let's say, as a whole, as a whole system, so the motion uh, is called rotational motion. This is the definition of rotational motion, uh, right? Axis of rotation. So what's, uh, in order to understand the rotational motion, you have to you have to have information about axis of rotation. So what's axis of rotation? Let me uh, read the definition for you and I'll explain it for you. It has two definitions, actually in our textbook, it mentions two definitions. Number one, the line about which the rotation occurs. That's the first one. Simply we can say it's a straight line about which the rotation occurs. Like for example, earth globe. There is an imaginary, actually, imaginary line, imaginary straight line that connects two poles of Earth, actually, together, and Earth rotates about, uh, about it, actually. Earth rotates about uh, this axis. This is called axis of rotation. And about the, uh, let's say, pinwheel, actually, about the pinwheel, this pin is the axis of rotation. So it's a straight line that it's a straight line about which an object rotates or I can say in other words you can uh, read under you can say under definition it's a line perpendicular to the side of the rotating object or a spinning object it's a line this line is perpendicular to the side of the perpendicular uh, to the side of the spinning object and passes through the center of gravity Look here, so about, the, about this, for example, pinwheel. I told you this pin, this pin is axis of rotation. The second definition is uh, more accurate than the first one. The second definition says that uh, it's a straight line that is perpendicular to the sides of the uh, spinning object. It's perpendicular to the surface or it's perpendicular to the plane of the object and passes through the center. You see, it passes through the center of the object. This is called uh, axis of rotation. 
or about the Earth globe, actually. And I told you there is an imaginary, uh, imaginary, actually, axis of rotation that uh, connects two poles together, North Pole and South Pole, and it passes through the center of Earth. This is called, uh, actually, axis of rotation. Uh, so axis of rotation is essential for uh, describing the rotational motion. Right? It's very important. Without axis of rotation, you cannot describe the motion of the spinning object. Right. So uh, let's uh, move on to another uh, another definition or another note. Actually, I wrote uh, two notes for you. Actually. Uh, Tip number one, I wrote two tips, so two notes. Rotational motion, that's the first one. Rotational motion is provided, is provided when the axis of rotation lies within an object. So let me underline it for you. Actually, rotational motion, let me draw it with uh, under color. Rotational motion, let me underline it, is provided when the axis of rotation lies within the object. So, axis of rotation is located inside the object. This motion is called rotational motion. Like what? Like the motion of Earth about itself, like this one I told you. I showed you the, let's say, Earth globe, actually. This is Earth globe. It rotates about itself, right? the motion of the Earth about its axis. This is the first example of rotational motion. The second example of rotational motion is motion of Ferris wheel about, about itself. This is the Ferris wheel. If you take it as a whole, right? Don't separate the parts. Don't say it's thicker. It, uh, it has a lot of seat, uh, seats and it has a lot of, uh, let's say, light uh, on, the, on the surface of Ferris wheel. Don't uh, care about these uh, parts. Don't separate the, uh, let's say, parts of the uh, Ferris wheel. Just uh, concentrate on the object thoroughly. Just take it entirely, right? So entirely, I can say the, uh, rot uh, the motion of the Ferris wheel about itself is the uh, rotational motion. So can I say can I say the uh, axis of rotation lies within the object? Does rotation, uh, does rotational axis, right? Does axis of rotation located inside the object? Of course, it's located inside the object. It passes through the center of the Ferris wheel. What do you say about this one? So this is the axis of uh, rotation. And I told you it's an imaginary line that passes through the center of the Earth, and it divides the Earth into uh, two parts, actually. This is called axis of rotation. So any motion with this uh, property is called rotational motion. Keep in mind that when the position of rotational motion uh, lies within the object, this motion is called rotational motion, right? So the uh, position of position of axis of rotation determines the type of motion, right? If the, let me repeat the, uh, let's say, note for you. If the axis of rotation lies within the object, so this object uh, has rotational motion. Like what? Like rotating, rotating Ferris wheel about itself, about itself, or rotating the Earth about uh, its axis, or rotating the pinwheel about its axis, and the axis uh, actually is located within the pinwheel. This is the axis of rotation, and it passes through the center. Uh, this is called axis of rotation. And this motion is called, uh, actually, rotational, rotational motion, right? The second tip, actually, it says circular motion is achieved. So there is new type of motion. Right? It's different from rotational motion. I want you to differentiate between rotational and circular motion. The second tip is called, uh, it talks about the circular motion. 
circular motion is achieved when the axis of rotation right is beyond an object when the axis of rotation is located outside the object right it's located outside of the object uh, actually such as the motion of earth about the sun motion of earth about the sun and motion of light bulb of a light bulb on a ferris wheel like this one motion of for example this light bulb here or here any uh, point on the ferris wheel if you take any point on the ferris wheel if you take this seat for example if you take this one focus on one point on a ferris wheel whether the point is seat or uh, i don't know a light bulb anything so uh, the motion of this particular point is not uh, rotational, actually, it's not rotational, it's circular, right? So circular motion, in circular motion, keep in mind that the axis of rotation is located outside the object, not uh, inside the object, right? Another example, yeah, I uh, re read it for you, it says motion of a light bulb on a ferris wheel around the center of the ferris wheel. So this is called uh, uh, circular motion. So circular motion, uh, I can say, differs from the uh, from the rotational motion only by one thing, right? Only by uh, let me compare between these types of motion, uh, right? Here, axis of rotation is located within the object, right? It's located within the object. That's why it's rotational. Here, axis of rotation is located within the object. It's rotational, right? It passes through the center like this. It's perpendicular to the center of the Ferris wheel. Uh, that's why Ferris wheel uh, actually, uh, uh, I can say, uh, involves the involves the axis of rotation. But here axis of rotation of uh, actually this axis is not located within the within the object itself the axis here in this situation for circular motion I mean for circular motion the axis lies within the uh, within the Sun here so axis is far away from the from the earth itself that's why axis is uh, beyond the earth this type of motion is called it's called circular circular motion circular motion right about the ferris wheel maybe you should hear uh, this is a ferris wheel and this is a ferris wheel how do we s distinguish between them here focus on only one point for example focus on this light bulb I study this light bulb in let's say several time intervals whenever you focus on this uh, let's say light bulb so you want to study this the motion of this uh, point right you focus on one point on a ferris wheel not the entire ferris wheel actually uh, when you focus on this and you observe that this point circles the circles the axis of rotation it does not rotate i said circle it circles the axis of rotation. Why do we say this? Because axis of rotation is located, uh, let's say, axis of rotation uh, rotation actu actually is far from the from this point. This is axis of the axis of rotation. That's why, and this is our point. Let me write. Let me note it as A, for example, point A, uh, and this is the axis of rotation. Axis of rotation is located beyond the this point that's why it's circular motion it's not rotational motion but this one if you focus on the entire object that's why we say ferris wheel rotates about the about its axis earth rotates about its axis so we have rotational motion in the case of uh, let's say in the case of having rotational in the case of having axis of rotation within the object. And we have circular motion in the case of having axis, let's say, beyond the object, yeah, outside uh, the object. There are uh, examples of uh, circular and rotational motion. 
think about, uh, for example, uh, ceiling fan, actually. Uh, what do we say about the, uh, for example, motion of a ceiling fan, uh, let's say, thoroughly? When I take the fan, let's, let's say, entirely, what do you say about the motion? Is it, uh, uh, can I say the fan rotates about itself or circles about itself? Think about this situation. Other uh, question, if I focus on only one point on the uh, ceiling, uh, actually fan, if I take only one wing or blade, if I say, uh, let's say, determine the motion of the blade of the ceiling fan, blade of the ceiling fan, think about it. Uh, I'm not sure whether uh, it's a circular or a rotational motion. Think about it, right? Just focus on the position of axis of rotation. If axis of rotation lies within the object, that's why it's rotational. If axis of rotation lies beyond the object, it's circular motion. I'm sure right now you know the answer, right? Let me reveal the answer for you. So about the entire ceiling fan, we can say it's rotational motion. So ceiling fan rotates about itself. And about the about each blade, right? About each blade or each point on a on a ceiling fan, actually, um, this blade, the one blade of a ceiling fan, has circular motion. So we cannot say blade of a ceiling fan rotates. We can say blade of a ceiling a ceiling fan, blades of a ceiling fan, rotate uh, circle, circle the uh, let's say circle the axis of rotation. And uh, let me uh, add one more, uh, let's say, information for you. Uh, let's say rotational motion, rotational motion of Earth provides night and day, actually. It, it takes 24 hours. So rotational motion of Earth takes 24 hours. It takes one night and day, actually. Uh, circular motion of let's say circular motion of earth uh, provides one year it takes 365.24 let's say days so here about the circular motion especially uh, about the sun uh, about the earth i'm talking about this earth right it's not uh, true for all objects you cannot say teacher uh, time interval for circular motion is greater than the time interval for circular, uh, for rotational motion forever. No, it's not, uh, let's, let's say, it's uh, situation is not such this for all cases, actually. You cannot generalize it. Just for, uh, let's say, just for Earth, you can say rotational motion ta takes one night and day. Uh, but here, circular motion takes, let's say, one year or 365, uh, let's say, days, right? about the, and we have a lot of examples, right? Let me give you another example. Tell me about the type of motion, motion of the moon, right? What do you say about the lunar motion about itself, right? One more question. What do you say about the lunar motion about, about, uh, about the Earth, right? So which one is circular, which one is rotational? I'm gonna leave it for you, and I'm sure you know the the answer, right? Uh, let me read other uh, question for you. Or we have we wanna uh, move on to another subject. Uh, this subject or this title, actually, the it's not new subject. Actually, it's uh, it's new quantity or new expression related to the rotational and circular motion. It's not new subject. It's a new title actually. Reference length. All of these expressions are essential. They are necessary for understanding the uh, rotational and circular motion. We need these information. So what's a reference length? Let me read the definition for you and I'll, uh, I'll explain for you. The horizontal line from which the angles are measured, right? Horiz it's a horiz horizontal line from which the angles are measured and drawn, let's say, to the x-axis, 
So this is the reference line. This line, let me uh, determine. So this line is reference line, this one. So does it uh, move along the positive x-axis or not? Yes. So this is called reference line. So it's a line uh, actually uh, about which the uh, from which the angles are measured. You can measure the angles by means of reference line. Any m angle is measured with respect to this to this line. For example, angle theta. Whenever you want to measure this angle, angle theta, you have to start from here. So this is a zero level. This is zero point. This is a starting point. Reference line, uh, it's a straight line. It's a special horizontal line. And keep in mind that reference line means positive x-axis, right? Positive x-axis. It's a, uh, let's say, reference for our motion. It's a reference for, for example, rotational and circular motion. It's a, a starting point for, a point for measuring the, the angle, right? And any angle is measured with respect to the uh, to this axis. If you have a point, for example, if you have a point on the axis of rotation, on the excuse me, uh, if you have a point on the reference line, for example, this point has a zero angle because reference uh, reference line itself is a zero level. Any point here has a theta of zero. So angle of these points are, are zero because they have no, let's say, motion. They don't have any displacement uh, from this position. They are located on the reference line. That's why, uh, let's say, their motion are considered to be zero. Their angles are considered to be zero. Radius of a circle, or we denote it as R. What's the radius of a circle? It's easy, it's not difficult, but uh, we need these actually expressions for understanding these uh, types of motion. A straight line drawn, a straight line drawn from the center of a circle to a point on the reference line. So it's a straight line. Radius of a circle is a straight line drawn from where to where? It's drawn from the center, let me erase the other part let's suppose it so right now I'm gonna let's say determine the radius for you for example for this point this is our point maybe we have a we have a ferris wheel here maybe there is a light bulb or there is a seat uh, there's any uh, there's a participant actually participant in this play actually so this is our point right it's a straight line drawn from the center of a circle to the what? To the to that point. And this point is located on the reference line. This is called actually uh, radius, right? So radius is the distance from the center to the uh, to the particular point. This is called radius. And by the way, radius is measured in meters because it's a distance between two positions, that's why it's measured in meters in SI. Maybe you say, uh, does it measure in centimeters, does it measure in millimeters? No problem. It's measured in uh, units of uh, distance in, in general, but in SI, uh, radius is measured in meters only. Right? So we have a note here. It says radius of a circle or R is measured in, you see, centimeter, millimeter, etc. Maybe you have millimeter and so on, right? But which one is valid in SI especially? Uh, this one is valid in SI, right? For example, you have uh, displacement, uh, you have, uh, let's say, radius in, in centimeter. You have to convert it into the meters. After that, you uh, solve, the, solve the problem, right? We have another uh, expression, which is arc length arc length or we denote it as s, s small. What's arc length? Let me read the definition and I'll explain it for you. It says, a distance measured along the circumference of a cir circle. Arc length is a curved path, it's a curved path. It's not a straight line actually. 
about the reference line and radius, you said that they are, uh, they are what? Mm, they are straight line. But here, about the arc length, arc length is a curved path, yeah? It's a curved path. And uh, measured along the circumference of a circular path, actually. Uh, let me uh, show it for, uh, to you, actually. Let me show it to you. So this is arc length, right? This arc length. This is our uh, our object, for example. This is rotating object or, uh, let's say, spinning object. Uh, by the way, if I say spin, look here. Keep it in your uh, keep in your your mind that spin and rotate they have the same meaning. If I say, for example, the Earth spins about itself, it's right. If I say Earth rotates about itself, it's true. They have the same meaning. Whether you say spin or rotate, no problem, as you like. They have the same meaning, right? So we have this point on the reference line. And I told the reference line is the starting point, is a zero level. The object uh, travels uh, an arc length. And I told you arc length is not a straight line. It travels a path along the uh, along the circular path actually it travels a uh, let's say route along the circle this is called uh, arc length and we denote it as s right the uh, the unit of arc length is meter centimeter etc right centimeter meter millimeter it can be measured in millimeters no problem but because there is a distance right but which one is valid in SI? Of course, meter is valid in SI. There are, uh, let's say, three important expressions. Reference line, radius of circle, arc length, and the last one that we needed, and it's very important, angle of rotation. Actually, angle of rotation is very important, especially whenever you want to describe the motion uh, of a spinning object the motion of the, uh, let's say, uh, of circular motion, right? Angular, uh, angular rotation or theta, right? Theta is very important. And by the way, this is theta. So the angle between, uh, for example, the radius and the, uh, between the reference line and radius is called theta. So this angle is located, or I can say th uh, the angle that that's located against the arc length, right? It's located against the arc length. Theta, theta is located, uh, let's say, against the arc length. Uh, exactly, that's when, so this is the position of theta. What does it mean? Theta and S move together. Angle of rotation and arc length move together. Uh, whether this uh, angle actually moves counterclockwise like this, right? Whether the angle moves counterclockwise, arc length cou uh, moves counterclockwise as well, and vice versa. Whether the angle moves clockwise, uh, arc length moves clockwise as well. So they are uh, actually dependent to one another, right? I can say theta, uh, theta and S have to do with one another. They are, uh, let's say, uh, connected to one another. Let me read under uh, uh, under information. Angle of rotation. I told you angle of rotation is important. I explained something in advance without reading the definition for you. This is uh, the angle of rotation, right? Let me read the definition. It says an angle through which a spinning object moves. It's an angle through which the spinning object moves or angle of rotation theta, we denote it as theta, is found by the equation. So this is the equation. We have an equation here. This is the first equation of our textbook, actually. Uh, this is the first equation for uh, grade 12, the first one. Uh, theta is equal to. So the what's this? Maybe this one is a reference line, right, reference line. And uh, this one is the radius of circular path. This is our subject. It moves 
for example, in this direction, counterclockwise, it travels a arc length along a circular path, actually. This is called S, S, right? S, arc length, and this angle is called theta. So theta is measured by two information. What are these information, actually? Theta is equal to theta divided by arc. Theta divided, arc length divided by radius of a circle. Right? If S, if S actually, arc length is measured in meters, right? And radius is measured in meters, so they cancel one another, and nothing rem remains, right? So units counteract, counteract one another. Uh, in this situation, I can say theta is a unitless. Theta, or angular position, is dimensionless, but uh, uh, I'll explain it for you. I'll, uh, let's say, I wrote uh, some notes about the units of theta, uh, right? Uh, we have a note here about the angle of rotation. So this is the equation, I told you, this is the first equation of our, of our textbook, theta is equal to S over R. Uh, circular and rotational motion are described in terms of angles. Actually, in uh, whenever you want to describe the motion of, uh, let's say, of angular motion, whether the angular motion is circular or uh, rotational, it doesn't matter. Uh, you have to focus on angles, right? You describe the circular motion and rotational motion by means of angles, right? All points on a rigid rotating object, this is another note. All points on a rigid, these you see, I see rigid rotating object, except the points on the axis, except for the points on the axis, move through the move through the same angle during any time interval. What does it mean? For example, Earth is a rigid rotating object, right? It, Earth is a, a rigid, yeah? It's a, a, terrestrial, a terrestrial, actually, planet. It may, it's made of, uh, actually, rock, right? It's not gaseous. That's why it's a rigid object. So this speech or this note is just for, let's say, rigid body. It's not for, it's not true for gases or uh, liquids. It's just for solid and especially rigid body. For example, we have a rigid body. Uh, whenever you determine any point on the Earth globe, actually all of these points move with the same angle except for what? Except for the points that are located at the, at the axis of rotation, right? So we have an exception here. We have an e exception. The exception is the angles of, uh, is the points of what? The exception is the points located on the, uh, let's say, located along the axis of rotation of the Earth. Other uh, points actually move with the same angle, right? Uh, it says rigid, uh, and I told you actually about the rigid. Why do we say this information is true only for rigid? Because Think about, let me give you an example. Think about uh, stars, right? Think about the stars. Uh, stars are not rigid, actually. They are made of plasma. They consist of extremely high gas, right? Extremely high gases. So uh, these gases actually uh, cannot uh, gather in a, in a uh, uniform, uh, let's say, shape, right? That's why the shape is uh, let's say changing continuously. Uh, in this situation, the center of Earth, right? This uh, the center of er Earth has a particular angle, angle of rotation that is different from the angle of rotation of the atmosphere of the Earth, uh, atmos atmosphere of the Sun. If I said Earth, I I'm sorry about that. Actually, I'm talking about the stars in general any star in, uh, let's say, uh, stars in general, and especially sun, for example, because we belong to sun, right? Think about the sun, the center of sun has a particular angle of rotation, yeah, right? It's a particular value. But this uh, value for the angle of rotation is different from the 
astro uh, from the angle of rotation of the atmospheres atmospheres of the sun of the sun right so uh, but uh, what do i mean by this example i mean that this information this note is only true for rigid object it's not true for uh, it's need uh, actually uh, it's uh, neither true for uh, liquids nor for nor for gases right but actually uh, even for the rigid body we have an exception and i told you the exception what are the uh, let's say points that uh, that have different uh, let's say angle of rotation with the other parts of the earth only the points that are located on the axis right let me read the so i prepared some questions for you but uh, i'm gonna finish the lecture here uh, thank you very much for watching this video and bye bye